Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is the third Sunday after Epiphany, January 21st, 2018. This is Communion Sunday. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508. We have an outreach store, thrift store. It's open Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 1, closed on Thursday. Food pantry is open every Wednesday, 9 o'clock to 10.45. Rainbow table is Friday, every Friday, 12 noon to 1 o'clock. Everyone is welcome for a meal. Sunday after the Epiphany, we honor the Epiphany because this is when Gentiles worship Jesus. Jesus welcomed Gentiles from his birth. Songs of thankfulness and praise. Time after the Epiphany. And this was written by Christopher Wordsworth, 1807-1885, and arranged by Johann Sebastian Bach, a Lutheran organist who is probably one of the greatest musicians and composers in the history of the world. Bach.
and also with you.
1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, girl. Jesus calling us. According to St. Mark, the first chapter, glory to you, O Lord. And after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to him, to them, follow me, and I'll make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. A couple of announcements. First of all, there is a sign-up sheet uh, for ushers on the back cabinet under the window if you would like to usher in March or uh, February, March, or April. Uh, your help would be greatly appreciated. Also, as some of you may know or some of you may have missed it, but as your prayers and sympathy for our brother John Dietrich on the passing of his brother Amy. Uh, the funeral was Friday at the Littleton Group. Uh, so please remember John and Karen and family in your prayers as they mourn the passing of his brother. Also, February 14th, Valentine's Day, is Ash Wednesday this year. There will be services at 2 and 7 p.m. Uh, the newsletter will explain what the midweek services will be about. And on February the 11th, the Sunday before Ash Wednesday, uh, we will be celebrating the 40th anniversary of my ordination. Uh, we will have a special preacher that Sunday uh, and a special service. It will not be our regular form of service. And understanding, if I understand Linda correctly, there will be a, some type of little Get together after church, so that will be the 1030 service. What's interesting is I was actually ordained on February 5th, and that year, 1978, it was Transfiguration Sunday. Well, this year, Transfiguration Sunday is on the 11th, which was celebrating uh, my anniversary uh, because our older sons could not be here on, on the 4th, which would have been the day before. But it's interesting that. Both the anniversary and natural formation were, were on transfiguration soon. So that is what is coming up. As now that we give your attention to our work.
examine second chances guaranteed. And our text is our first lesson for today, the famous story of Jonah. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Former President John Kennedy is quoted to have said, Success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. No one wants to claim that. And when we look around life, we know that this is true. When we are successful, everybody knows who we are. Everybody's our friend. Everybody wants to take something from us or give us something in hopes of receiving something in return. We discover we have relatives we never knew we had before because of our success. But if we fail, all of those people disappear. If we fail, we're lucky to get our former best friend to pick up the phone or return our call. You remember the champion, but you forget the challenge. Failure can be devastating. It can alter our lives, it can change our lives, and do so forever. But for a Christian, failure does not have to be so devastating. For a Christian, failure does not have to upset your life, especially when you trust in the Lord through our Savior, Jesus Christ. For those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, failure is not the end. So what comes next? These are the lessons we learn from the prophet Jonah. And what the first thing we learn from the prophet Jonah is that our God is a God of second chances guaranteed. That no matter how many times we mess up, through our faith in Jesus Christ, God is willing to give us another chance. We all know the story of Jonah and how he disobeyed them. In the first chapter we read, God comes to Jonah and says, I got this message I want you to give to Nineveh. And immediately Jonah, thinking from a human perspective, thinks, now this is an odd quest. Nineveh is the capital of our hated enemy, Assyria. Assyria oppresses us, Assyria has harasses us. Assyria makes our lives miserable. Why in the world should I go there and preach a message of repentance so that they can repent instead of God destroying the city? So I had a better idea. And of course, acting out of patriotism, acting out of being a good son of Israel, Jonah decides instead of going east to Nineveh, the best thing for him to do for Israel is to go west and to book passage on the ship to a place called Tarshish and get as far away from the city as possible so that there is no way they can escape the wrath of God. We all know how the story ends. Jonah gets on the boat. They go out to sea. The storm comes up. The sailors begin to panic. They stop, start throwing the cargo overboard. Jonah wakes up where he's been sleeping down in the hole. The ship comes up and makes him, oh, oh, hold it, buddy, hold it. Stop throwing your prophet over the side. Problem is me. Toss me over and everything will be fine. Sure enough, they grab old Jonah and throw him over the side of the boat into the sea. And as we learned when we were kids, a big old whale comes and swallows him up. And Jonah is in the belly of the world. And he tells us that after three days, or on that third day, he repents, and God is the big fish spitting back up on shore, and God comes to Jonah a second time. And this is where we see God giving to us a second chance. Not many areas in life are we given a second chance. Life is so competitive that usually you are given a chance. You take that chance. If you fail, then you are passed over, and that chance goes to the next person. My dad tell, told me how in World War II, he was a member of the Golden Arrow Division, and they kept being transferred back and forth between Patton and Bradley. And he said when they were in the Patents Command, 
commanding. It seemed like every two or three weeks, the colonel of their division would be called back to a meeting behind the lines with General Patton. And the next thing was that, jet, that colonel was in a jeep going further back behind the lines, and the other jeep was coming forward with a new colonel who was going to take over the outfit because Patton didn't give second chances. Either did what Patton wanted. He would boot it out. Thankfully, God's not like that. Thankfully, God, through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, is a God of second chances. And what we see in the story of Jonah is a foreshadowing of the repentance that comes to us through Jesus Christ. As God comes to Jonah that second time. As we read in verse 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Now the Hebrew word translated as word literally means what is to be said. So what is to be said comes to Jonah again. It means the command that is to be issued. So Jonah is given a command from God. And the word means promise. So Jonah is given a promise from God to the people of Israel. Repent and I will forgive you. Ignore the message, and you will suffer my wrath. What is interesting, then, is the Hebrew word translated as second time literally means a new beginning. The promise of the Lord came to Jonah as a new beginning. That is the God that we worship. A God of second chances guaranteed. A God who gives us new beginnings. Gives us another opportunity to be successful. You recall the, the <coughs> how well your biblical memories are this morning. Everybody remember the 21st chapter of John, what takes place? Raise your hand. You know what happened? 21st chapter of John. Don't ever smile or have something to that. Huh? 21st chapter of John. The disciples are out on a boat fishing. They went to the shore. They see a figure. There is a fire burning. Uh, they recognize it's Jesus. He tells them to throw over their nets. They catch some fish. They come on shore. They eat some of the fish that they caught for Jesus uh, to make breakfast. Jesus feeds them all with breakfast. Then he pulls Simon Peter over to the side. And he says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, you love me. And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love him. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. Then the second time, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus says, tend my sheep. And then a third time, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And by now Peter is grieved that the Lord is asking him a third time. He says, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. And then he goes on to tell Peter how he will go out to proclaim the word. And unlike when he was younger, he would go wherever he wanted that there will be those who will take hold of him and grab him and take him where he doesn't want to go, of course, foreshadowing his martyrdom for proclaiming the good news of the gospel in Rome. This is Jesus giving Peter a new beginning. Peter had stood up in the upper room and swore to Jesus that he would go to prison with him, that he would die with him. That all the others could fall away, that he would be there. He would be that rock. And yet, just as Jesus had predicted, we confronted three times with being a follower of Jesus. He did not, and each time and when the cock crowed, Peter was devastated. Now on that beach early in the morning, Jesus reinstates St. Peter as a leader of the apostles and gives him a new beginning. And that is what Jesus 
does for us. And that is what is illustrated by Jonah in his opportunity to go again. Again, as I said, in modern day society, you don't, you don't do what the boss says or you're not successful, he's not going to give you another chance or she's not going to give you another chance. But our God is a God of second chances guaranteed. And we also learn from Jonah that our God is a God who will enable us to repeat an encounter with life. Verse 2, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. Get up and go to that great city. Once again, the encounter with the same people he was supposed to have encountered weeks ago before he ended up in the belly of the Lord. He sent him back. Human behavior would be not to send him back. But God doesn't act like us. He gives Jonah that opportunity to return and have an encounter where he had faith. Once again, Jonah is the chosen one by God to proclaim his word to the pagans of Nineveh and offer them that chance of salvation. How often have we done something in our life and we wish we could do it over again? That we could have a second chance. That we could, as the modern phrase is, have a redo. Wouldn't it be nice if we could go back and redo? <laughs> So many things that we made the wrong decision, or we followed the wrong thing, but that's not life. We don't have that chance to replay, succeed. In life, we are very often given even the opportunity to redo something that we missed. It. But with God, that opportunity exists always. He gives us repeat and encounters so that we can turn failures into success. But sometimes we do have a chance for a reading. When I was in fifth grade, I entered the countywide 4 H speech contest. And the day came for the contest, and I got up and gave my speech, and I thought I had done a terrific job. And when it came out to Oh, now it's the winners. I came in second place. Needless to say, I was disappointed. And not only was disappointed, I was frustrated and aggravated. And of course, typical human behavior could not see how the person who won was better than I was. So my mother and I drove back to my grandmother's farm where we lived. I got out of the car and was met by my, by my grandmother who was out in the yard tending some of her many flowers that she had. And she asked me how I did, and I said, oh, Grandmother, I failed. I said, I finished second. And then my grandmother said something to me, but before I tell you what she said, and give you a background to understand my grandmother, when my mama was little, uh, her mom and dad had a thoroughbred horse for just like you see in Lexington, the white fences, the whole thing. And they raised thoroughbreds, mostly to sell to other farms to race. But the ones that weren't so, my grandfather did would take and race down in Louisiana and up in Canada and the fall meet at Churchill Downs. Uh, they never had a triple crown winner type horse. Uh, but they made a nice living. By the time we grandkids came along, They've gotten out of the thoroughbred business and it was a grain farm and we raised soybeans and corn. So I tell Grandmother, Grandmother, I failed, I finished second. And Grandma said, What do you mean? She said, You finished in the money. You know, in race horses, thoroughbred racing, first, second, third is finishing the money. Even if you don't win, you come second or third, you get said, There's nothing wrong with finishing second. You're in the money. And that kind of took me back. And I thought about that, and that became my motivation. So that instead of quitting and giving up because I hadn't won like I thought I would, 
That motivated me to my sixth grade year. So the spring of my sixth grade year, I entered the contest again, and this time I took home first prize, the blue ribbon. So sometimes we get a second chance, but not often. But with God, we always do. I told you about Jesus and Peter. But now think about the sixth chapter of the book of Acts. We're introduced to a very nasty person. His name is Saul, and he's a Pharisee. And he hates this new movement called the Way. And he believes that Jesus of Nazareth was a fake and a fraud and no way the Messiah. And he has determined to stomp out this new young Christian church by himself, if possible. Every Christian he meets has arrested, put on trial. And in one day he's on the road to the masses. And on that way, he is confronted by the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. And unlike a human story, no Hollywood was writing this, Jesus would appear to Saul and then send fireballs out of his eyes to destroy uh, Saul completely or have him have you know, warring claws to call him all up or some other kind of superhuman uh, exploits to totally obliterate Saul so there was nothing left. That's not what Jesus does. Jesus blinds Paul to humble him so that his heart will be open. That when a man named Ananias comes to visit him on the street called Street, he accepts the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and is baptized. And goes from being Saul, the Pharisee, the hater of the church, being Paul the Apostle, the greatest missionary and theologian the church has ever had. Because our God is a God of second chances guaranteed. Our God is a God who allows us to confront the failures of our past and gives us an opportunity to overcome. And what we learn from Jonah this morning also is that our God being a God of second chances guaranteed is also a God who gives us a new success. As we read in verse 5, And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sacrifice. They believed God. Biggest, probably one of the biggest if not the biggest revival, evangelistic crusades in the history of the Christian church. Remember on the first Pentecost, Peter preaches and 3,000 become Christian. The scholars estimate Nineveh was a city of over 175,000. According to what Jonah says, they all believe. And they put on sackcloth to show their remorse and their repentant hearts. So God gives Jonah that second chance which brings a new success. The word believe means to trust, to have confidence in, to confirm, to support, to view as reliable. That is how now they saw the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as they left their idols in their paganistic ways. Jonah the fifth brings an entire city to faith in God. Failure is turned into success, a success far greater than he ever could imagine. And the success began with an act of disobedience when he first refused to go to him. You can have success over failure as well. One thing you must remember is as William Brown, the author of the book, Welcome Stress, says, quote, failure is an event, never a person. Failure is an event. It's not a person. It doesn't mean a 
person to bad. Doesn't mean the person was wrong. Just means the event didn't happen. I was watching History Channel last night. They were talking about the beginning of Las Vegas and how when it became the opening for the Flamingo Hotel, uh, Las Vegas had a rainstorm like they hadn't had in a hundred years or something. It was a terrible downpour. They kept all planes grounded, nobody could drive in flat. So this big grand opening for the Flamingo was a flop when it originally was supposed to open because of this unusual rainstorm. It was a failure. It wasn't the owner of the Flamingo was a failure. It was the event was a failure because of the weather. So if you fail at something, don't take it personally. But remember how God will give you a new opportunity to have success. We overcome failure by believing in God and by following wherever He leads us. So failure does not have to be devastating. It does not have to change our life. It does not have to upset everything we are used to. It does not have to do away with yourself. But trusting in God and allowing Him to turn your failures into second chance opportunities, allowing Him to turn them into repeat encounters, from that, success can come. Because our God is a God of second chance guarantee. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing, Oh, how I love Jesus, which is printed on the back cover of your book. Frederick Whitfield. Frederick Whitfield lived 1829 to 1904. Frederick Whitfield was born in Ireland and he became a minister in the Church of England. He didn't write the chorus there. The chorus is a chorus, a folk chorus from America. It was attached to a lot of hymns. Oh, how I love Jesus. This, there is a name I love to hear was written by Frederick Whitfield.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became true to the human. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven. He will come again before us to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one whole and half of the Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the no, I have the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Prayer of the church. And God's abundant love. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Our response today is your mercy is great. God of new life, renew your church when we are paralyzed by sin and evil. Breathe your words into us, showing us your will, so that we may live according to your purpose. Hear us, O God. Strengthen those who sow seeds, raise livestock, and catch fish. Bless them in their labor for the sake of all, who depend on them for food. Hear us, O God. Give all governments the wisdom to serve the least of those who are in their care. Assist all public servants to seek justice in their work. Hear us, O God. Bring your healing to the lives of those people who are in distress. Comfort those who hurt. Bring those who worry. Restore those who are sick. Make them whole again. Hear us, O God. Bind people together by your Holy Spirit. Be present in relationships between family members, loved ones, and friends. They each may find joy in the blessing of others. Hear us, O God. As we remember the lives of all saints, especially the apostles Peter and Paul, make us into your willing servants, who will one day rejoice with all the inhabitants of your heavenly reign. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. for our offering. Connie Singleton and Carol Glaze are our ushers today. This is the 21st of January 2018. We're talking today about the second chance that we get. This is the third Sunday after Epiphany and we are Gentiles and we do have a second chance here of becoming part of the body of Christ and 
God accepts us as our as chosen people were chosen as Gentiles and and uh, the Jews were chosen people but we were chosen as Gentiles as the, the epiphany when the uh, three kings came they were Gentiles they were not Jews and this was from Jesus's birth Gentiles were accepted and we are accepted we thank God for the flowers on the chancel stand the glory of God presented by Linda Anderson in loving memory of Terry Anderson you can see the beautiful flowers today. They're fresh flowers every Sunday. We're very thankful that you have come to worship with us today in our, our 1030 service. We have uh, nursery care, 10 a.m., 1145 every Sunday. Holy Communion is celebrated first and third Sunday in each month. And we are celebrating Holy Communion today. We receive Jesus Christ. He did not leave us. He is with us. He is the Holy Spirit. He is, is with us as God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and He is with us in the bread, and the bread become truly present as His true body. And He said, this is my body, his, and we receive His true body as the elements look the same, but they are changed, and this is His body and His blood that we're receiving into us, and He is with us every minute, and He is with us here in the sanctuary. We thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know of your care and prepare us now for the feast of the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. St. John practices an open communion. For all those who are baptized and believe in Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, who believe his body and blood are truly present as we gather this table, and are the community of your own individual congregation, we invite and encourage to come forward with us this day as we gather at the table of the Lord. We continue our celebration with the great thanksgiving on page 152. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give us thanks and praise. by his glorious resurrection to open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in there in any kingdom.
Christ will come in. Remembering their first Saturday command, his life and passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, Lord, to you, Lord, God Almighty, and honest be honest, but it is for you. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and be your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we, and all who share in the body and blood of Christ, may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may we forth to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory of your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
By our Lord Jesus Christ, with precious blood, strengthen, preserve your true faith until life eternal. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We conclude our worship with hymn number 542 in the back of your worship. Hymn number 542. This hymn, O Living Bread from Heaven, is German words and an English melody. It was written by Johann Rist, 1607-1667, talking about how this is the gift of eternal life we receive in the Holy Communion. The music is by Samuel S. Wesley, who lived 1810. 1876, one of the Wesleys, and it's a English melody, but German words, so living bread from heaven. God bless you. We will pray for you. Pray for us. Pray for one another. This is January the 21st, 2018. We are at St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We have morning services 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday and Sunday school at 9.15 a.m. Midweek service at 6.30 p.m. And you can receive Holy Communion. Jesus will be with you ever and ever and never leave you. you receive Holy Communion. He is with you. And then when you die, you receive eternal life. You receive this. Jesus is promises to be with us forever. He'll never leave us. As long as we believe in him, he is with us. 
and he restores us to serve him. Watch our Sunday services on YouTube or Google. This is what you're doing right now. We praise you for doing that. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio, January 21st, third Sunday after Epiphany. We celebrate Epiphany as the Gentiles are coming to Jesus. Jesus welcomes the Gentiles. We thank those who have assisted in the service today. Harvey Baker was worship assistant. Diane Myers was the reader, union assistant. Sally Baker, ushers. Carol Glaze and Connie Singleton. We invite you to come. We, how could you turn down the gift of Jesus Christ? He's died for you. And he will come to you in Holy Communion and you receive eternal life. How could you turn this down? How could you want to not have eternal life to be with Jesus? Jesus loved us. Oh, how we love Jesus because he first loved us. He loved us. God loves us. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit are with us, the three in one. We thank you. Praise be to God, and God bless you.